Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to review the ASUS Mini PC, the ProArt PA90 Workstation. This is actually a review unit that ASUS Singapore has sent over, but this is not a sponsored video in the sense that I'm not paid to make this video and I have to return this. So I've been using this for two weeks and in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts from the perspective of a visual content creator, someone who does graphic design, edits photos and 4K videos on a daily basis. This was released in 2019. You have the option to configure this with the Intel 9th generation processor with 6 to 8 cores. You can get this up to 64 gigs of memory. The base model comes with only 256 gigs of storage though. And for graphic cards options, you can get the Quadro P4000. To see the full specifications, you can just visit ASUS website. In this video, I just want to talk about my user experience, my workflow, and how this computer actually um, performs in the real world. When I first took this out of the box, I was surprised by the size. For a mini PC, it's not that mini. The weight is quite heavy, 5.8 kg, but compared to those uh, DIY workstations, it's pretty light. Just to give you a sense of um, how big this is, this is my Mac Pro from 2013. It runs quad-core 3.5 GHz Xeon processor. And this particular unit that I have here, this has the Intel i9 9900K processor, which has eight cores at 3.6 GHz. And this is my Logitech K810 wireless keyboard. So you can see the P890, it's much larger than this keyboard. Now, uh, the design looks good. It's actually a very clean and simple design. It's big, but the footprint is quite small. This is great for those who don't have a lot of table space to work with. So it can fit at this small area at the corner of my table very easily. The footprint is about the size of my palm. So there are grills all around except for the front pots are on the back. These two are for the wired antenna that's included and you do have to use this because the internal Wi-Fi module reception it's not fantastic. 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB 3 ports, Thunderbolt 3 ports, RJ45 and there are four full-size display ports. Depending on the graphics card that you have inside, the type of display ports may vary. You may get HDMI. And here, there are two uh, ports for power. These are the two humongous power bricks included. For this particular unit, I have 180 watt here and 230 watts here. On the front, there are two more USB 3 ports. 3.5 millimeter mic in and 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Let's power up the computer. So this is how long it's going to take to boot up to Windows. And notice the lid actually uh, rises. This is a 4K 15 inch monitor that I have connected to the computer with this single USB-C cable. So the storage that's used inside is the NVMe storage made by Samsung, capable of reading up to three gigabytes per second. So the boot up time, it's really fast. When it comes to loading applications, saving huge, files like huge Photoshop files, it's very snappy. This is the effective storage capacity you will get with 256 gigs SSD. And in, after installing Windows 10, it should be around 225 gigs of storage left. The lid can be removed very easily. This grill can be removed as well. So that's the ring of LED lights. The colors will change depending on how hard you push the processor. You can do some DIY upgrades like swapping out the RAM or inserting a 2.5 inch SSD. You just have to remove the screws here to reach uh, the parts. 
due to the design of the lid the hot air will come out from the sides like this so if you have this near you it's going to blow hot air into your face I have this beside my bigger monitor with the shading hood which actually blocks off the hot air so that's definitely something you should take note of now the sound that the motor makes when the lid goes up and down I find it to be well distracting if you have this under the table it's not too bad but if it goes up and down um, it's distracting So that's how the moto sounds. I wish ASUS had some way to keep this permanently at the top. All right, let's talk about workflow. Now, if you are just doing graphic design, you can just go with the Intel i5 with six cores. If you go with the eight cores, uh, it's a serious overkill. Anyway, uh, let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna open this 900 megabyte file with Photoshop CC, and this is how fast it will take to open that file and this particular file is 14,000 pixels by 7,000 so it's quite a big file and when zooming in and out you can see it's extremely fluid there's no lag at all there's no screen redraw at all so now I'm going to change the colors by sliding this hue slider around and the changes are reflected instantly with this high-res file with my Mac Pro and with other computers that are not as powerful um, the system will pause for a second or two before the changes are reflected let's try liquify to move the pixels around so the changes are updated almost instantly the only issue I have here is when zooming in and out, you see the screen would redraw. But um, the redraw is quite fast and only happens with this liquify window. Editing photos is effortless. These are 24 megapixel raw files. When I exported 100 raws using the Intel i9, the 8 core processor, it took 1 minute and 30 seconds. So that's really quick. Modeling and exporting 3D files, it's also effortless anyway for such high polygon scenes. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't challenge the NVIDIA Quadro uh, card at all. The NVIDIA Quadro graphics card actually has independent software vendor certification so it's officially supported by Adobe and Autodesk software. Now the PA90 also has the option to go with NVIDIA GeForce RTX cards which are better at gaming. Gaming performance with the Quadro P4000 it wasn't as good as I expected. At 1080p I was only able to get like uh, 25 to 30 FPS which is not that oops which is not that good so I had to drop down the resolution to get higher frame rates like up to 40 to 50 FPS which is also not that great so for some light casual gaming the graphic card works fine anyway the PA90 it's not a gaming rig so don't expect like the best gaming experience uh, having said that i mean this is still quite smooth oops the only area where you can actually push the processor is when it comes to editing 4k videos so i have tried editing 8 to 10 bit videos at 60 fps and the uh, overall video editing experience the performance it's really very smooth you can edit off the internal storage which is very limited or you can edit through external storage via the Thunderbolt 3 ports I have been editing 4K videos um, using external SSD drives through USB 3 on my Mac Pro for a year so you are definitely going to be able to edit even higher spec videos through the Thunderbolt 3 port to export a 5 minute 4K project into a H.264 video it takes around 1 minute and 10 seconds which is about a quarter 
of the time of the video and when it comes to exporting HVAC which is H.265 it takes one third of the time which means if I am exporting a 10 minute video it's going to take about 3 minutes and 30 seconds that is quite fantastic so some of the art videos that I make they can be as long as 20, 30, 40 minutes with the Mac Pro that I'm currently using it would mean I have to spend I mean the Mac Pro will have to spend hours to um, export those videos but now with the PA90 it can export those videos in a fraction of the time it took the Mac Pro and that was how much time it took to export this five minute project into H.264 Alright, to conclude, let me just go through the things I like and dislike. I like the design more specifically. I like the small footprint because it doesn't take up a lot of space on my table. There is Thunderbolt 3 and the system is definitely quite powerful depending on the configuration you go for. If you're just doing graphic design, you can go with the Intel i5 6 core processor. If you're doing 4K video editing, definitely go for the Intel i9 8 core. 16 thread processor that's really powerful and for those who need the nvidia quadro graphics card there is the option there is the quadro p4000 and the p2000 depending on your budget and your needs things i don't like um i don't like the lid that goes up and down it's unnecessary and it makes noise and also the two humongous power bricks um i guess you need them to power the system but while well, they are really huge. <laughs> oh, another thing about the PA90 is the limited upgradability. I mean, when you buy a computer that looks like this, don't expect to be able to upgrade all the individual parts. So the only things you can upgrade would be RAM and you can insert a 2.5 inch SSD, that's about it. If you want to expand storage, you can get an external USB 3 or Thunderbolt 3 uh, storage enclosure, which is going to be able to give you like lots of storage. Now over the years that I have been using the Mac Pro 2013, which has basically very limited or no upgradability um, it worked fine I didn't have to think too much about it I mean I just buy this and I work with this so the Asus PA90 it's for creatives and professional who want to buy something that works but don't want to think too much about upgrading uh, the parts I mean when you buy this you used it for a few years and then you upgrade it by changing the whole thing out the Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth will be extremely useful for video editors who work with 4K or higher spec files. For my videos, uh, which are usually 4K, 8 bit 25 frames per second, when I export those videos, um, I didn't even push the system, the lead did not even go up. When I checked the task manager, the processor was only um, utilizing like 25% um, of the raw power and the uh, quadro was maxed out at 100%. So it didn't even use like up to 50 over percent of the processing power so if you want to get this to export and code decode h264 h265 this can definitely last you for a few years until h266 comes out and when h266 is out i'm very sure this will be able to handle that as well in terms of pricing, well, the pricing can vary um, a lot depending on what kind of configuration you go for. Most of the online stores that I see that are selling this, um, they have already pre-configured it for you. So you cannot do like manual configuration. So the cheapest model that I saw on newegg.com that starts at uh, $1,800. Here in Singapore, there are two configurations. Um, one is $3,499, the other one is over $4,000. Anyway, I'll put some links in the video description below to where you can compare the prices. So, is it worth the money? Um, 
it can last you for a few years so in that sense it's worth the money i mean i have been using the mac pro 2013 that i paid a lot of money for seven years ago i'm still using this because it still works it hasn't broken down yet so i'm going to continue to use this now if i have a system like this i am very sure i will be able to use this for at least 10 years no kidding all right so Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. See you guys in the next video. Bye.